when you hear the intro music, you'll notice that this is a Saturday Night Stop Covenant episode, which is normally found on Patreon. I haven't had time to edit a Snap Covenant episode this week, so I'm bringing this to you instead. I hope you enjoy it. It's been really busy. I'm recording this at night, so we have to be quiet. Okay, I'll see y'all later. Bye. Hi, Richie. Hi, Sin. (laughs) (laughs) Guess what? I think I know, but go on. You tried to bully me. I was not bullying you! And then, that is why this is Saturday Night Snack Covenant, episode 14 now. Oh, Jesus Christ. Explain to us what happened. You were looking for out-of-copyright films to show in the background of a podcast. And then, we were talking about old silent films, and I mentioned Battleship the Temple. Uh-huh. And you said, what's that? And I was... Like, do you not know Battleship the Temkin? It's an extremely famous Soviet film. And then you said, oh, you asked for it, and sent me a link to a Zencaster room. <laughs> and now we're talking about Battleship Potemkin, the film you haven't seen. <laughs> I, the problem is I think that, like... You just had this instinctive reaction to record it, and now that your anger is starting to lower, your completely unjustified anger, you're now realizing that you have nothing to say. (laughs) Good episode, Richie. Thank you. Do the outro. (laughs) That was our review of Battleship Potemkin. Four stars. It rocks. Okay, Battleship Potemkin. Okay. It's um it's based on a, a mutiny on an actual like real battleship called the Potemkin. The way that we write it with English characters is P O T E M K I N. And there's obviously a way to write it in Cyrillic and I have no idea how to even be- I'll send it to you on Discord. Hang on. Oh, okay. Okay, there. That's how it's that's how it's written in Cyrillic. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We're gonna do okay. a little Russian lesson. Okay. So, uh, the first letter, the little bridge. The little bridge, yep. Yeah. Bottom half of an H. Yeah, yeah, bottom half of an H is a capital yeah. P, right? Right, yeah. And then the second letter that you see there is an O, so it's like an English. Yeah, it's just an O. And then a yeah. T, which is just a T. Yeah, exactly. You're getting a hang of it. Yep. <laughs> You're getting the hang of it. Yeah. But then... There's an E with two dots above it. Yeah, okay. So the E with two dots. Yeah. Uh, it's pronounced... Okay, we have an E without the two dots. It's pronounced yeah. as like yeah or E. Eh, okay. Yeah. But the yeah. E with two dots is pronounced as yo or... So it's like Pyotyomkin. Pyotyomkin. Yeah, because yeah. that's it's sometimes written out um, P O T Y O M K I N. Yeah, but um, Potemkin is like the that's how you'll usually see it written. Okay. Okay. It sounds more Russian. I still have no idea what it means. Is this someone's it's the name last of the name? ship? Yeah, but what does it mean? Oh god! Well, we'll look up the Potemkin on Wikipedia. Is this someone's last name? It sounds like a last name, but I yes, don't it's know. named it's named after Prince Potemkin of uh, Tauridia, which is a place on the Crimean okay. Peninsula. Okay, there we've learned history and geography. <laughs> okay, but then the letter after the E was to dots is M. Yeah, it's like an English M. Yep. Then there's the K, which yep. is, and then the backwards N is E. Right. And the H is an N. Yeah. Get your act together, Cyrillic. <laughs> Do you know what? Funnily enough, okay, this is, um, this would happen all the time because uh, we had like English classes back in like the Union, right? Yeah. And the way you write uh, the English G, you know? Yeah. Um, like the, the little one. Um, 
I'm, I'm showing it to you. I thought you were actually showing it to me, but you're just like pointing at your microphone because you think I live in. No, I was it. showing you with my hand, like I'm okay. doing the gesture. Okay, good. With the yeah. G. So for the people listening, she did this. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, it's the same way as you write the Russian D. Right. Like the little D. So after like English class, whenever we'd have to like write in Russian, in the Russian class, would be all like confused with our letters, would like write the G instead of a D and stuff like that. Yeah. There were some other letters too, like the way that you write the B in English. Yeah. Is the way you write the V in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to teach you the Russian alphabet? Ooh, all right. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, In order to properly appreciate Battleship Potemkin, we have to learn Russian first. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm trying. Okay, so basically in Russia, if you look at most Russian people's handwriting, I guess from yep. a certain era, it almost yeah. all looks the same because we're all taught to write the same way. And you have to write in um, cursive, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's always like, obviously there are variations, but uh, the writings of everyone are very similar. Right. At least I find. Um, so I'm trying to find Russian alphabet cursive. Okay, so this is a good example. I will copy this image and paste it to you. Okay, so you see there is the one, the letters you see in books and then right. the letters you have to write with. Okay. Oh, okay. So the yeah, so the first oh there's even helpful like how to pronounce them. Yeah. So the first one is a. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second one is b. <laughs> it's funny for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And the the little b uh looks like a looks like a note, like a musical note. That's all right, the little b do you see? Okay, and then after that there's v, which looks like mm -hmm. the English b. And yeah. then <laughs> this is G. I guess it's the equivalent of like G, which is like G, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like a Tetris thing, actually, it now does. that I look at it. Yeah. And then, okay, and the row below, the little house is there. And um, a lot of these, I'm pretty sure, were like borrowed from the Greek alphabet. Yeah, I recognize some of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and there is, then there's a yeah, like yeah, like yes. Yeah. And then there's yo. I think we're missing out on the most important one, though. Which one? The backwards R. It's at the end. It's at the end, Richie. We'll get there. Okay, there's a carrot for us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, then there's this one. <laughs> it looks so funny. <laughs> That's a J. <laughs> it looks like a spider or something. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think it looks like? It looks like um, two Ks joined together yeah. yeah yeah it looks like a rune of some sort yeah it'd be um if it's greek that would be like psi but they've stuck an extra two little things on the bottom so that's why it must be like shit yeah they shit. tried to be yeah. fancy <laughs> yeah. so you think they just like they just got the greek alphabet and were like we'll copy it but we'll change a few things so that way they <laughs> yes. won't accuse us of plagiarism <laughs> okay and then this is Z. Z is a three basically Okay. That is just a three. Does this not get confusing if you're writing out numbers? The numbers, you have to write them in a very specific way. And a three does not look like this when you write it properly. It will become clear when I teach you numbers next episode. Oh, thank you. And then... <laughs> okay, so the backward N is E. Oh, look at that. There's a backward N with a little thing on top. Do you see? With a little hat. Yep. <laughs> And we call it Ikratka, and it's pronounced as Y. And um, interestingly enough, I think no no actual word starts with this letter. So we don't have like a measure skill version of it when we write. Right. Just okay. uh, minuscules. Okay. Then there's K, yep. which looks like K, and it's pronounced yep. Ta. Then the L looks like... The the book L looks like the P, but it's not. It has a little thing to the mm -hmm. left. But then when you write it out, it looks like um what does that look like? <sighs> it doesn't even look like a letter. It looks like the bottom half of an H. 
with the twirly bit. Yeah, but when you write the... Um... Oh, the cursive one. The cursive one just looks like an L. Oh, yeah, an L, but without the loop. Yeah. Or just like an L if you have bad handwriting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, and then there's an M, uh, which pretty much looks like the English one. And then there's N, which is H. And then there's O, which is O. Good. And then there's a P, okay. which is P, which looks like a bottom of an H. Okay, th- thank you, listeners. We're now halfway through the alphabet. <laughs> We're hurtling toward the end of the alphabet. What are your theories about how this is going to end? <laughs> okay, and then there's the R, which looks like an English P. But when you write in cursive, it doesn't look like... Well, it kind of looks like the English P a little bit still. Yeah, yeah, it does. And then there's a S, which looks like the C. So this is why sometimes, even to this day, I get confused. Because in Russian, we just have uh, a letter S, but also pronounced as S, right? Mm-hmm. So like we have one letter S. But in English, there are two letters. There's an S and a C. And sometimes it's like, it's, you know, you write the wrong one and people are like, no, it's S. And I'm like, yeah, I wrote an S. No, you wrote a C. And it's like, ah, yeah. Same thing with um, E, because our E is a backwards N, but your E is our E. So sometimes also, like, if you write it and don't pay attention, you, like, misspell things. Okay. And then T. Okay. So the book T looks like an English T, but the cursive T The capital one looks like I don't know what, and the little one looks like an M. What are your thoughts, Richie? (laughs) We're just reviewing letters of the Cyrillic alphabet now. Yes. Letter reviewer is your new series. (laughs) We'll go go back in time 10 years and pitch it to Channel Awesome. (laughs) What's that? It's a defunct um, website where people would review movies and scream about them. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, Richie. So the next letter is ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> yeah, like ooh. <laughs> and it looks like a Y. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, after that is F. And it looks <laughs> like a Greek letter. <laughs> yeah. And then there is a H. Yeah. Like pronounced as which is looks like an X. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> Okay. And then there is a C, uh, which is like a little upside down chair, and the uh, cursive one looks like I don't know what. It's a little, it's a little weird. Mm-hmm. A little weird there. Yeah. And then there is a chair, yeah. which is another sort of H. And then there is sh, sh- which is like an upside down M, and there is sh which is like an upside down M with a little thing like they haven't said. And then there's <laughs> the hard sign, <laughs> which is unpronounceable. You just put it in certain places uh, to make the letters. What? The hard sign. It makes a letter hard. <laughs> and then there's U, and then there's a soft sign. And again, it's used in... Uh, it's well the heart sign doesn't always make the letter hard god how where do we use the heart sign let me think no you use the soft sign to make um what do you call the letters that are like k l m n what consonants yeah, so you use the soft sign to make them soft because they're hard by default, but you also use the hard and the soft sign in the middle of a word to like change the sound a little bit. Yeah. Okay, and then there's E, which also looks like a Greek letter. And the next one that looks like the Starship Enterprise from above is U. And uh, what's the last one, Richie? It's the backwards R, finally. Finally, and it's pronounced yes. yeah. No, it's pronounced R. Ah. No, it's pronounced yeah. 
No, it's when, look, listen, <laughs> when you want to make a word look Russian, it's just the English word, but the R is backwards. That's how it works. Thank you, Richie. Uh, and do you know what ya yeah also means in Russian? Does it mean me? Yeah, it means I. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, that was Battleship Potemkin, everyone. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our discussion of Soviet montage theory. <laughs> Please don't unsubscribe. This wasn't my idea. We were just talking and then she gave me this link and hit record. I didn't, I just. <sighs> so Richie, now that we speak Russian. <laughs> now that we can speak Russian fluently. Yes. Tell us about uh, this movie. <laughs> da Tovarich. <laughs> Um, Battleship Potemkin is, it's a 1925, a very famous and influential Soviet film about a mutiny on a battleship during the Russian Revolution. So what happened on the battleship? It's, it's a series of events where like the sailors on the battleship start to mutiny. Actually, you'll, you'll appreciate this because the food isn't good enough. Ooh. Yeah. They start a mutiny because the food isn't good enough, and then that kind of spreads to the shore, and then there's, like, a a fight on the shore between, like, the revolutionaries and the the Cossacks sent by the Tsar. Oh. There's a very famous scene where, like, a lot of people... Like, there's a famous scene in it that, like, people will know even if they haven't seen the film, which is it's, like, a baby cart rolling down some steps. Uh-huh. And it, it gets some um, reference in a lot of other works, like you yeah, see it in. Yeah. 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 Um, and, um, yeah, it, and it just ends with them uh, sailing off to join the revolutionaries. Mm. Mm. See, it's a very, like, patriotic, uh, pro-revolutionary film. Based on, yeah, based on an act, this actual mutiny that happened. Ah. Well, you see, this is why I keep saying you're, like, the best love. Yeah. On this podcast, I had no idea. I'm very surprised you didn't know, because like, well, maybe I think you would have seen it. Like, maybe they played on TV, and I'm like, "What is this shit?" You know, I'm five. I want some Disney movies, please. And it's like, no, you just get communism. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, it's famous because of the way it uses um, the way it uses montages. Mm. Cool. We should watch it sometime. All right. Mm. All right. Is that it? Is that your review of this movie, Richie? Yeah, I'm sorry it wasn't as in depth as you going through the entire Cyrillic alphabet. <laughs> Do you have any other Soviet movie recommendations you'd like to share with us? Um, hang on, let's let's have a look. See, uh, I wonder if there's like a list of early Soviet films. Okay, no, no, we have to find list. Okay, best. Okay, Soviet hang on, Soviet. No, I found Soviet. There's just a Soviet films category on Wikipedia. No, no, we need best ones. We can't just like. But who's defining what's best? The internet. Top 100 (laughs) Russian and Soviet movies. Okay. Let's see. Well, Man with a Movie Camera. That's that's extremely influential. What? Man with a Movie Camera. What? It's called Man with a Movie Camera. That's what it's called. Oh, oh, Richard, you get it told. (laughs) <laughs> am I giving attitude or am I just like, what is it? Me? What is it? What is it? It's this oh, attitude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's find another side. This one isn't loading for me. Oh, oh actually, it just, no, no, no. It's loading. Did it load for you? I haven't clicked it. Click it. <sighs> yes. is our sin. <laughs> it's actually pronounced. Tsar. It's using the T letter that we looked at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In case you remember. <laughs> Extremely condensed Russian course. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, no, there we go. Okay, it's using the th letter. Yeah. And in the end, okay, you know how you say, okay, say it how you say it. Tsa. Okay, but the way you say it is tsar. Tsar. Yeah, it's four letters. Tsa, a, yeah. er, mm. and the soft sign, so that the r is soft. Oh, so tsar. 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 Ri. It's like a soft one. Ri. Tsar. Why are you making it hard? You have to ri. It's soft. Ri. Like a bird. Yeah, because r is hard and r is soft. Zar. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Sinclair Law. <laughs> How often in recording these do you forget it's a recording and you're just talking to me? Because I get the impression. Yeah. It's been happening more. I feel like it was happening to you in the beginning and now, like, it's happening to me now. You've just, you've just discovered a way to monetize <laughs> our, dis our just discussions we would normally have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow, this uh, this top 100 Russian movie site's taking an eternity to load. Well, it loaded for me, finally. Yeah, it's still loading for me. Okay. Is Nightwatch going to be on here? <laughs> okay, so number 100. A few days from the life of I.I. I. Ablomov. Um, if you're too lazy to read a classic of Russian literature about lazy, Are you seriously just going to read this listicle? I'm trying to remember what it's about. This film is for you. Uh, Ablomov is played by the talented Alek Tabakov. Most of the movie he spends loafing around on the couch until a woman transforms his Hang on, his hang on. Life. How do you pronounce his name? Okay, this looks familiar, but I don't remember it. But I, I'm sure there's Because there's the... Cause there's the, there's yeah. a, um, there's a Bloodborne summon called Oleg. Oleg. Oleg Tabakov, I guess. Maybe Tabakov. I don't know. Oleg. Yeah. So in Russian, the spelling is that O's. When you write an O, you sometimes you pronounce it as an A. Just, just whenever. Is there like a rule to it, or just when you feel like it? Okay. Uh, yeah, just to just to fuck okay. with people and make spelling unbearable. That's why. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it's pronounced Oleg. Okay. Okay, like this this one. Okay, Richie. Read this. This is my oral exam. Malaka? <laughs> I think Malaka is a curse word in Greek. It is, yeah, that's that's where um Mal gets her name from. Lol. No, this is read as Malako. Malako. It just has O's in it, but two of yeah. them are read as an A. Ah. Why? I don't know. It makes more sense than English. No, it doesn't. English is like so with it compared to Russian. It's really with it. Is this your? It's going to be the title of your Russian to English translation service. English, it's with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so glad you found a top 100 list because it's we're going to be here for like three hours. Well, we could make this a multi-part series. No. <laughs> Okay, 99 is Intergirl. I don't know. I don't think I've seen this. Let's see. Little Vera. I don't know. I don't remember it. The Woman Who Sings. Oh, Pugacheva. Do you know Pugacheva? No. Okay, we'll have to have a whole episode on Ella Pugacheva. She's basically the most famous pop star in the union. Right. Okay. Uh, Kinzadza. Okay, I've seen this. Have you seen Kinzadza? Oh, good. No, I haven't. Every inhabitant of the Union has yeah. seen this. I don't really remember what it's about. Yeah. I think you showed me a clip from this once. I think it may have... No, I, it was another one because I haven't Googled oh, this okay. in many years. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, everybody's seen it. I don't remember what it's about and I remember being worded out by it because it's like... Uh, but uh, yeah, classic. Good. What's good is that we're just saying the names. So... Uh -huh. People who are listening to this and don't speak Russian, even if that sounds interesting, there's no way for them to actually Google, like, what is it? Kinzadza? Kinzadza, yeah. So that's a K I N hyphen D Z A hyphen D Z A. Okay. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Yeah, that's cool, I think. 
I don't remember. I just I think it's I think it's a comedy, right? Sin says, watch it. I think it's a comedy, right? <laughs> Two random acquaintances find themselves in another galaxy. Yeah, I don't remember this at all. Maybe I should watch it. Next one is Mother. Uh, doesn't look familiar. Then Shadow of Forgotten Ancestors. I don't know. Then I don't know. 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 Where are you? Where know. are you? You're just going down saying I'm at number eighty-five. Oh, okay. Eighty-five. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you haven't 84. seen like, Alexander Nevsky. Where? Which number is that? Okay, eighty-six. How do you say that name? Uh, Alexander Nevsky. Nevsky. Okay. Yeah, that's another like very famous. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know. Eighty-two. I don't know. Eighty-one. Oh, okay. I've seen eighty-one. I think. Yeah. Oh, it's like a, a Mun- Baron Munchausen thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a big deal back in the Union. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they had more than one movie about him. Yeah. Yeah, there was the Terry Gilliam one around the same time that went very badly. Oh, yeah? Why? Oh, it was just massively over-budgeted and didn't make very much money back. Just like Dark Souls 2? Probably not. Probably made money. Forget that. No, more like more like Solo with Star Wars story. Oh, don't you talk shit about Solo? It's the best one. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. Okay, so uh, 80, I don't know. 79. Well, I know Ivan the Terrible, but I haven't seen this. I have this somewhere. We could watch it together if you want it. Yeah? Okay. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. No, I know what we need to watch. I'll tell you if I find it here. Okay. Uh, 78. I don't know. 77. I don't know. 76. Okay. Solaris? Yeah. I have I have it on DVD. If you can, we can watch that. Isn't it like 17 hours long? It's like three hours long. There's a remake with George Clooney that's a bit shorter. I've seen that one. Yeah? How did you find that? I don't remember. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep actually that we, we have this like like screen junkies or collider style like <laughs> geek news show and you come back from like so you're just like I don't remember I think it was a comedy and you're just sitting there eating chips. Well I am eating chips. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh 75 awesome. big school break. What? Awesome. Back with some more geek <laughs> news. I saw it, I don't remember. I think it was comedy. <laughs> okay, Richie, thank you. Thank you for the impression. We got it. 75, big school break, looks familiar. <laughs> also probably a comedy. Yep. I don't know. Uh, 74. Oh my god, 74! Oh yeah, okay. Okay, good, okay. good, good. That was actually... Yeah. It's like, okay, so it's a comedy, and I actually, I feel like all Russian comedies are a little tragic, like the original Simpson episodes, but even though I don't remember much of this, I remember the concept, and I remember actually, like, not hating it as a kid, because I really didn't like a lot of the Soviet movies, because they were all so depressing, right? And so in this one, for some reason... um, I don't know if it's for an inheritance reason or some sort of like fraud reason. Mm-hmm. Like a man is pretending to be an like an aunt of a family, kind of like Mrs. Doubtfire, right, I right. guess a little okay, bit. Okay. I don't know. And uh, the movie is called "Hello, I'm Your Aunt." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we should maybe watch it. Yeah. I do, I don't remember what exactly happens in there. I just remember not completely being depressed by it. It does. It does look from the thumbnail we have, like it's quite yeah. broad. Yeah. Okay. Um, seventy-three. I don't know. Seventy-two. Oh my god. Ah, приключение Буратино. Do you know what's a Буратино? Pinocchio. Yes. How did you know? Because it says under the clip, it says the Russian version of Pinocchio. Oh, God, this shit was so depressing. I did not like it. I didn't <laughs> understand why anybody liked it. It has such a depressing feel and air. Yeah. Oh, right, this is like um, depressing Soviet Wizard of Oz. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 
He looks like the like boss in a video game. Doesn't he look like he's about to cry? I mean, he has tears painted on his face. Yes, he does look like he's about to cry. <laughs> oh, he's got a big ruff like Queen Yarnum. <laughs> yes. I'd rather watch Ultraviolet, like... Yeah, but I'd rather watch that than a lot of things. Ultraviolet's good. We stan Ultraviolet. <laughs> the Ninth Company. Um, I don't know. It's about the Soviet-Afghan war. Yeah, Soviets also made a whole bunch of movies about, like, wars. That's so depressing. Didn't like them. Most countries make movies about wars. The Soviet ones were depressing wars. Yeah, like, American movies about wars will be like, Sylvester Stallone <laughs> in Rambo, and he just, like, runs around and just kills yeah. everyone, and it's just, like, cool, and there's a happy ending. But Soviet movies are like, you fucking cry. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. a real war. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. So basically, so- Soviet, Soviet movies about war are somewhat realistic. Yeah, you yeah, see, I don't yeah. appreciate that. I prefer the Rambo stuff. Like, life is depressing enough as this. Was there a Soviet equivalent of Rambo? Did, w- was there, like, a recurring Soviet action hero character in anything? I don't know. I, I think I'll have to ask my parents. I can't tell. Uh, okay. I don't know. Probably. 69. I don't know. 68. I don't know. 67. I don't know. 66. I don't know. 65. I don't know. 64. Movie camera. Oh, man go. with a movie camera. Tell us about um, it. Tristan. This is considered to be uh, one of the first, like, kind of realist documentaries. Mm-hmm. They basically just wandered around the Soviet Union filming people. And it's, yeah, it's from 19, oh, uh, God, it's like, yeah, 29. So. Okay. So, thank you, Richie. Uh, 63. I don't know. 62. I don't know. Okay, 61. no, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, yes. I have seen Amphibian Man. Is this like Aquaman? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. It is about a man who has um, gills transplanted into his body and lives underwater. Oh, he's a little mermaid. It's sort of like a bit like Aquaman, but also, a bit, you know, the shape of water. I haven't seen it. I know it. It's kind of like that, but um, if the fish guy just looked like a person. Oh, okay. And yeah, I remember because it, it was uh, there was a, a subtitled version on um, Australian TV one night when I was a kid, and I just stayed up watching it. Oh, that's cool. It's the shape of water, but reversed, where like he is the fish guy, but he falls in love with the woman on land, and he has to figure out how to live on land. Oh, well, like I told you, the little mermaid. Yeah, it, actually, yeah, it is just a little mermaid. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, 61, I don't know. 60. Oh, okay, 60. Okay, remember that, the... yeah. Battleship Potemkin. Yeah. The reason okay. we're here, the reason we've <laughs> been here for, let's just check. Uh, 41 minutes. 59, have you seen War and Peace? Uh, not all of it. I tried. It was very long. And then I watched something else and forgot to go back to it. <laughs> Have you read it? No. Yeah, me neither. Because everybody's like, oh, we're in peace. Shut your masterpiece. You need to read it. I'm like, no. No, I'd rather read Nightwatch. <laughs> uh, 58. I don't know. 57. Um, That's Beauty and the Beast. I know this, yeah. but I don't remember. I I know this for sure, but I just I don't remember anything about it. And it's called An Ordinary Miracle. Yeah. It's Beauty and the Beast backwards. Yeah. Oh, he, have you seen it? It's because he he turns in. It's like a beast who's turned into a person, and he'll turn back if someone kisses him. But then he wants to stay as a person. So he's like, "Oh no, oh, I don't want her to kiss me. This sucks." Oh. I know. 56. I don't know. 55. I don't know. Oh, 54. 54. The classic. <laughs> Nightwatch. Oh, God. Not only is this a bad movie <laughs> on its own, it's such mm-hmm. a horrible adaptation of the book. It's just like, why is this here? You know how there's like, in Solo, there's like, 
um, Han Solo and Chewbacca. Yeah. Now yeah. imagine if this was adapted from a book, and at some point Chewbacca goes to Solo like, "Hey, I'm actually your father." Like yeah. that's the level of like, what the fuckery that happened in the night? Watch the movie, <laughs> which was like, why is this happening? Whose idea was this? Yeah. Yeah. That was my reaction to Solo as well. So. No, Solo was good. <laughs> Okay, 53. Okay. I don't know. 52. I don't know. 51. Um, I'm not sure. We'll live till Monday. I don't know. I'm not sure. I feel like rings a bell, but I'm not sure. Okay. 50. Beware of the car. Is it? I. If they. Why don't they have the Russian title? I feel like, again, this maybe rings a bell. Because it's an English website. First, teach people the alphabet. And then do the titles like we did. <laughs> Word of advice, Russia Beyond. First, teach people the alphabet, <laughs> then show them the list. And then you just like put your fingers together and sit back in the chair looking smug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 49, I don't know. 48, I don't know. <gasps> no, okay, okay. I recognize Viktor Tsoi. Do you know Viktor Tsoi? No. I can't finally recognize someone. Okay. Uh, he's a singer. Yeah. Yeah. He has really cool songs. Yeah. I used to like listen to him. Uh, Unbelievable Adventures of Italians in Russia. I feel like I've seen this recently, like within the past few years. Yeah. And so the description says uh, they have basically, it turns out that St. Petersburg is home to a huge number of lion statues. To find the one with treasure buried underneath, Italian crooks dig under all so of them. So it's like, um, it's a mad, 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 mad world, but they're all Italian. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. 46. I don't know. 45. Okay. I have a feeling that you know this. Um, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I've seen, like, clips of it. Yeah. Do you want to say what it's called for the people who were listening? V. <laughs> and how do you spell V? So it's V, E, I, Kratka. <laughs> or V, I, Y. I'm just trying to make sure that the people listening to this, because you just keep saying 45 on that one, they can't see the article we're reading. <laughs> And it's pronounced V, basically. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, and it's about, I guess, this priest or something that has to survive a night in the cathedral or whatever, and these monsters are like, oh, we're going to eat you. And he's like, no, because I have, like, I don't know, a Bible and some salt or whatever. But then V shows up. No, that doesn't work against V. Ooh. Yeah. Intense. Okay. 44, I don't know. 43, 43, I don't know. 42, I don't know. 41, I don't know. 40, I don't know. 39, okay, okay, okay. Приключение электроника. Right. Yeah, it's like a kid's movie and I've seen it, but again, I was just like depressed watching it. I was like, I don't know, I don't know if I, I don't know. And it played a lot on TV too. I didn't appreciate it. What's it about? Um, it's basically about a a boy, and then there's a robot version of him or something. Right. Um, uh, they have adventures, but I wouldn't call them adventures. It's just like they just do depressing <laughs> things. <laughs> um. Okay. Thirty-eight. I don't know. Thirty-seven. Yeah, what do you call this in Russian? Yes, I've seen it. Okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find a Russian name for this. Okay. And, uh, and the woman who plays in it, Irina Muraviova, is like a really, really famous actress from the Union. And uh, this is like um, yeah. a romantic comedy, I guess. I think she only played in romantic comedies. It says here that she's she's over 30 and worried she won't get married. It says here that 
that they help her by getting her yeah. fashionable outfits from the black market. So that's our ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a. I'm remembering parts of it. It's a cute movie, yeah. and the movies that you star in usually, I think, have like songs yeah. in them. They're like, I think, a lot of like romantic movies, comedies, romantic comedies, and the union had like a song and dance. But some of them were actually good. Okay. So I would recommend anything um, anything with uh, Irina Muraviova, I'd recommend. Okay. So then 36, I don't know. 35. Everybody knows that. It's kind of like Kinzadza. Like everybody's right. seen it. I don't remember what it's about. It's probably a tragic comedy, yeah. but like everybody's seen it. Um, oh my God. Okay. Okay. 34, 34, 34 is our jam for anyone listening. So think about the best Soviet comedy. Okay. Think a couple. And this is one of them. What is this, Richie? A kindergarten teacher is a dead ringer for a dangerous gangster. So the police ask him for help in investigating the theft of Alexander the Great's golden helmet. But to do so, the mild-mannered tutor must embed himself in a criminal gang and even arrange a jailbreak. <laughs> it's actually really good. I get yeah. as a child, you don't necessarily appreciate it, but I actually love this. Yeah, it's really good. It's called Gentleman Udachi, um, means gentleman of fortune or gentleman of luck. Yeah. And it's yeah. really, we need to watch it. It's really, really good. Okay. And the, the guy who stars in it looks a bit like a Soviet version of Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> okay, 33, I don't know. 32, I don't know. 31, I don't know. 30. Oh, место встречи изменить нельзя. Can you read us the summary? Crime in the USSR is said to have dropped during the hours that this was aired on TV. The entire country, including criminals, was glued to the screen The screen as investigators... How do you say this? How would I know, Richard? Just do your best. Gleb Zhelglov? Yeah, good. And Vladimir Sharapov tracked down a criminal agent in post-war Soviet Union. They were the Holmes and Watson of their day, even Sharaparov's mustache was Watson-esque. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't remember what this is about, but it was on TV. Everybody watched it. Everybody knows it. Yeah. And it's called The Meeting Place Cannot Be Changed. What are you typing, Richie? Are you downloading all these movies? I'm messaging Lance. No, I'm talking to Lance. <laughs> what is more important? Are top 100 Soviet Union movies? Or some Bloodborne stuff. Well, the Bloodborne stuff took like 10 seconds. So we now return. Are you telling him to watch The Gentleman of Fortune? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're like, Lance, there's a really Okay, cool serious question. What <laughs> if, that? right, the next From game, uh huh, it's like fantasy Russia? That would be cool. No, but like how will, will you become like the expert on it? I'll get my parents on the podcast. Okay. They're experts of the Russia in the 90s. Yeah, it'll, it'll be set in Russia in the 90s. <laughs> Up to the 90s, yes. <laughs> oh, so it's like Perestroika Souls. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Perestroika Souls. <laughs> For those who are not as Russian as you, Richie, what does Perestroika mean? Why don't you tell us what the Perestroika was because you were there? I'm shy. It, no, you, you, you're, you're the one who's actually from. You have to tell us. No, I can't talk. I don't speak English. You've been talking endlessly. Что? It was basically like the the tail end of the union, essentially. Like you started sort of like yeah, liberalizing more. Yeah, it was a, a, ser a series of reforms, basically, to what was sort of the beginning of the end. Yeah. Pedestroika basically literally means like reform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Richie. Okay, 29, I don't know. 28, I don't know. Okay, okay. So remember earlier I told you think of two Russian comedies that are good? This is the second one. 
Иван Васильевич меняет uh, профессию. Окей. О, да. О, это выглядит хорошо. Окей, read the summary. An engineer creates a time machine and accidentally brings Ivan the Terrible to the USSR. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually really funny. I really want to see well, this. I made my boyfriend watch it. He loved it. Yeah, so we'll watch this. Yeah. But interestingly enough, okay. um, in English it's called Ivan Vasilievich Back to the Future. But in Russian it's actually yeah. Ivan Vasilievich Changes Profession. Because what happens uh -huh. is that not only do they bring uh, Ivan Grozny into like present, yeah. there's somebody else yeah. that like switches with him in the past. So it's like two people are stuck in a different time and it's really funny. Okay, 26, I don't know, 25, I don't know, 24, I don't know, 23. 23 looks neat, but I don't know it. Look at it. Well, she's eating. There's a lot of food. So, I mean, you're like, ah, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 22. Uh, Operation Y and Shurik's Other Adventures. It's This one's also funny, but weird. Um, we might watch it. It's like a comedy. And there's like, there are certain things, like, for example, from this comedy, like, when you say something, like, people know it's from here. You know, it like becomes a sort of like a expression you know what i mean it's like right. one of those really really popular movies uh uh student shurik is forever getting into scrapes in the first adventure he has to confront a bully at a construction site oh sounds familiar i guess i'm shurik oh this is a construction site <laughs> we're, con we're constructing a terrible podcast <laughs> Shurik was a folk hero in the USSR, the image of an exemplary student and a uh, Komsomol member. <laughs> Richie, do you know what Komsomol is? No. You really don't know or are you just saying it? No, I don't know. I'll, I'll read from Wikipedia so I don't say something inaccurate. Okay. Like, I know what okay. it is, I just don't uh, know all the details. Basically, <laughs> um... The All Union Leninist Young Communist League, usually yeah. known as Komsomol. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, an abbreviation of it, right? Um, yeah. It's sometimes described as the youth division of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, although it was officially independent and referred to as the helper and the reserve of the CPSU. Right. The Komsomol, in its earliest form, was established established in urban areas, 1918. <laughs> Little communists. Aww. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's like Muppet Babies, but with like. <laughs> yes. Anyway, 21 is kidnapping Caucasian style, and it's also like a comedy that's uh, very reminiscent of 22. And I think Shurik plays there too. Oh, it's a sequel. There we go. It's a sequel to the one we just saw. Okay, excellent. Yeah, these things are funny. They're not super depressing. They're just mostly funny, so you can watch it. Okay, 20, I don't know. 19, I don't know. 18, I know, but I, know from, I don't remember Carnival Night, but it's very, very popular. But I just don't remember. 17, oh my God. Oh my God, Richie. Yeah. Richie. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. So this is the one where um, uh, it's like where the like a Soviet officer infiltrates like uh, I guess Nazi ranks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and so it was also like a really popular. I don't know if it was a series or a movie, but again, everybody like it's knows a mini series. So. Mini series, yeah. It it says like right next to it, mini series. Oh. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, but that's another one that was that's like really really popular. But it says here they they it says here that the the main character was like the Russian James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. We found the okay. Russian James Bond. Yeah, and he became a national hero, and his name is associated with many memes and jokes. That's true. <laughs> Are they going to um, reboot it? They should. Yeah. You know, Russians are really, like, big on jokes and humor. Yeah. 
Um, we'll, we'll have to talk about Kavan at some point. Club Veselich in Ahochivich, you know? Right. Yeah. So. so this is a Stirlitz joke. Could you read it? Uh, okay, hang on. Let's, let's just hope it doesn't crash again. It, it's, I just pasted a text. I know, but I don't trust my computer at all. I don't know if it can handle text. Stierlitz opened the door. The lights went on. Stierlitz closed the door. The lights went out. Stierlitz opened the door again. The light went back on. Stierlitz closed the door. The light went out again. It's a fridge, concluded Stierlitz. <laughs> this is this is the Inspector Sinclair mystery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you're like, consequently. Consequently. It was a fridge. <laughs> Gesturing with your pipe. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, 16, I don't know. 15, I don't know. Okay, okay, 14. Richie, D'Artagnan, the dream of the I can't see because Chrome just froze. Okay, hang oh, on. I'm telling you, it's D'Artagnan, the dream of the Ah. Yeah. Um, I've seen this one. Uh, it has good songs. I think it was a little depressing at times. I think there was more than one. Mm -hmm. It's uh, D'Artagnan and the Three Musketeers. Oh, yeah, I think because it sounded like you were saying Three Musketeers in Russian, like musket yeah. something, yeah. Yeah. So it's actually good. It's, uh, I should yeah. rewatch it. I should rewatch it, yeah. You know, there's a version of, of the Three Musketeers that's got Mila Jovovich in it. Oh, yeah? Where? Yeah. It's just called The Three Musketeers. Oh, I didn't know that. Is this a... Wait, maybe I did. It was Is this like a newer one? In the 2000s? It was a few years ago. I've probably seen it. Yeah. yeah. 13. I don't know. 12. Oh, my God. Richie. 12 stulev. Okay, The 12 Chairs. Do you know about this? No. Okay, you can read the summary. How do you say this guy's name? Ostap Bender. Ostap Bender, a charming con man, is searching for diamonds hidden inside an antique set of chairs by the mother-in-law of a random acquaintance just before she died. The problem is the chairs have been sold off individually and are now spread across the country. Oh, I think I've heard of this. It's like a popular story, I find. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. It's a book or something, but it's so like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it because it's like, it's interesting and it's like, oh, and it's depressing at the same time but there are like good moments there oh my god oh my god oh my god rich number 11 okay number 11 is brillante ruka mm -hmm. <laughs> the diamond arm okay read the summary smugglers mistakenly place jewels in the cast of the wrong person meaning like the cast around his broken arm and then chase the unsuspecting respectable family man the young andre Mi miranov Woke up to nationwide fame after the premiere of this comedy. And it was seen by 76 million people. It was, again, it's one of those things everybody knows. Everybody's seen the songs from that movie. Everybody sings, like, and it's it's actually, like, one of the least depressing comedies of the Union Times, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Sabachi Sierce, number 10. Jesus, I don't remember what it's about, but I'm getting like, you know, like I'm about to cry. This must have been really depressing. It says here it's about um, human organs transplanted into a dog and it makes like a human dog hybrid. Oh, I'm pretty sure if he dies in the end or something because I feel yeah. really sad right now. Okay. <sighs> okay. Nine, I don't know. Eight. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. I may have seen it. Seven. Stalker. Oh, my God. I yeah. don't know they made a soccer movie in Russia or in the Union. 79. Well, really? I don't, I, don't, I know the books, but like, oh, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, because, like, I would, like, I'd say everywhere else it's the opposite and everyone knows the Tarkovsky film but hasn't necessarily read the book. Oh. 
Huh. Is it is it good? We can watch it together. It's the it's this it's the guy who made the three hour Solaris. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh my god, Richie, you? you're up to money. Look at it. Look, do you see? <laughs> it's a little hedgehog. It's called Hedgehog in the Fog. I think he's looking for his mom or something. Yeah. I hope he finds her. I can't remember. Yeah. I just remember being freaked out by it as a kid. Yeah, yeah. I showed I showed you an image from this and you were like, is this a Dark Souls boss? <laughs> remember with the with the freaky owl looking out of the fog? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Oh, Moscow slizam ne verit. Moscow does not believe in tears. Uh, I don't remember what it's about, but I know yeah. it. It's probably some depressing yeah. romantic movie. Number four, I don't know. Number three, <laughs> I don't know. Number two, I don't know. And number one, yeah, ironia судьбы. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to realize that Russian comedies are a little. Like, they sound like Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> Who is the Russian Adam Sandler? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I remember, like, um, in Albania, when that was, like, that had really strict censorship. For some reason, they allowed in the the comedy films of a, like, British, British comedic actor called Norman Wisdom. Okay. Who is considered, like... A terrible, like, joke of a man elsewhere that is venerated in Albania because for generations those were like the only comedies anyone saw. It was just Norman Wisdom, <laughs> Mr. Grimsdale. It happened again. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so read the summary, Richie. Every year on December thirty-first, me and my friends go to the bathhouse. Genia. Genia, yeah. Genia. Zhenya, the likable hero of this tale, repeats throughout the film. In Russian minds, yours, <laughs> I pointed at you then. <laughs> this phrase is forever associated, besides the new year, with the, with a situation that might or did go horribly but amusingly wrong, pointing at me. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the film has been shown on December 31st every year without fail since its release, keeping countless people entertained while cooking and preparing for the new year. So it's like a comedy about, like things going wrong on new year's eve okay but basically this guy uh, gets drunk and he goes to his house yeah and <laughs> falls asleep there but when he wakes up turns out that he's in completely someone else's house and then the the lady comes home and she's like what are you doing in my house and he's like this is my house and anyway uh in the end they like fall in love or something so it's kind of like the hangover yeah 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 basically yeah. Is there a sequel where he wakes up again and he goes, I can't believe it happened again. Well, they did remake it, this movie in like the 2000s. Jesus. It was horrible. At least yeah. there had some like, this had some like 70s charm. But in the 2000s, it was just like, oh, I think the guy from Nightwatch may have played in it. Jesus. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so our, our next job, I guess, is to watch a bunch of Russian comedies together. I think so, yeah. yeah. Because I'd say like Russian cinema generally associated with depressing socialist realism and <laughs> uh, incomprehensible science fiction. But I think I think it's time for us to, yeah, watch some wacky Russian comedies. Well, actually, I know two things we have to watch. Gentleman Udachi and that uh, weird sci-fi cartoon that I showed you at some point. Yeah. Okay, so we gotta, we gotta keep that in mind. Okay. All right, I guess this is it, Richie. Do the outro. <sighs> that was... God, what was it? It was... We were talking. I asked if you'd seen Battleship Potemkin. Mm-hmm. You said no, and I was like, oh, really? Because that's like a really famous Soviet film. You took immense umbrage at this. <laughs> Ran to Zencaster, left the Discord call, made me talk to you on Zencaster so you could record it. Mm-hmm. Um... You taught me the Russian alphabet, which I've now forgotten. Mm-hmm. You got me to explain very briefly the plot of Battleship Potemkin, then you went through a list of 100 Russian films. Uh-huh. Um, most of which we hadn't seen. Uh-huh. And it's now quarter past two in the afternoon. 
Yay! Thank you, Richie. You have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>